Count Alexandre de Marenches was a French military officer, former director of the SDECE French External Intelligence Services, special advisor to U.S. President Ronald Reagan and a member of the Academy of Morocco, family. Alexandre de Marenches was born in Paris in 1921, son of Captain Charles Constant Marie de Marenches a French aristocrat from a very old family of knights of Norman origin, aide-de-camp to Marshal Ferdinand Fokken, together with Aldebert de Chambrun, a representative of Marshal Philippe Pettin to General John J. Pershing. His mother Margaret Clark Lestrade was a U.S. citizen. Early years as a youth he met many of the Allied leaders of the First World War, such as Marshal Fock and General Pershing. Marshal Philippe Pettin was a witness at his parents' wedding. In 1939 the then Count de Marenches joined the army, the cavalry, and entered the field of intelligence by informing his relatives and contacts in the United States of German activities in France 1940. He narrowly escaped arrest by the Gestapo in 1942, crossing the Pyrenees Mountains on foot and making his way to Algiers. He joined the French forces of liberation there and played a distinguished role in the Italian campaign. Wounded at the Battle of Monte Cassino, he became aide-de-camp to General Alphonse Duin, the commander of the French forces in Italy. In this role he helped coordinate the U.S. military and French Expeditionary Corps, and the eventual successful Allied advance into Rome. After the war he ventured into industry but remained in the Army Reserve, ultimately reaching the rank of Colonel. In 1962 he resigned in protest to Charles de Gaulle's Algerian policy. The choice of President Pompidou he was eventually chosen to head the French intelligence services by France's then President Georges Pompidou, two of whose main criteria for selection were de Marenche's perceived independence and integrity. Pompidou was aware that factions in the intelligence services had been circulating defamatory reports for the last six months to General de Gaulle's presidency concerning the conduct of his wife and himself, alleging involvement with the film star Alan Dellen. Dellen's bodyguard had previously been found murdered in September 1968. Some agents had taken the opportunity to smear Pompidou in revenge for his previously having taken very firm action against some of their colleagues, involved in the kidnapping of Ben Barker, the leader of the Moroccan opposition in 1965. The Marenches was brought in to clear up to these factions, the fact that the Marenche had been close to de Gaulle's former comrade in arms. Alphonse Duin may have also played a role in the original choice. In 1970 he was installed as head of the SDECE, the forerunner of the current direction General de la Securite Exterior in this position he signally carried out the president's instruction to clean up the service and was indifferent to any protests that resulted. A natural activist, he began to travel and to meet with other governments in order to pursue the interests of France in different parts of the world. The presidency of Giscard d'Estaing such was his authority that when Giscard d'Estaing succeeded Pompidou as president in 1974, he kept his position throughout both of their periods in office, ultimately occupying the post for 11 years. Tellingly, when Pompidou died and the key to his personal safe was deemed lost, de Marenches was found to be in possession of another. In Chapter 7 of his autobiographical book The Fourth World War, Marenches says that Pompidou's safe in Elysee Palace was opened by one of the Secret Service's safe crackers. Only after, Marenches summoned the late president's son and his chef du cabinet as witnesses to its contents. Op. CIT, at 147, under Giscard d'Estaing, de Marenches tried to awaken interest in the former Portuguese colonies in Africa, and when Giscard protested that they were a long way away, he answered, yes, but they're getting nearer. Like many in the intelligence community, he resented Giscard's lack of concern about the communist threat and more generally about Giscard's deliberate ignorance that history is tragic. Achievements It is difficult to assess de Marenches's achievements. 
There were those who believed that while he was one of the busiest figures on the intelligence circuit, some of his pronouncements were based on slender information. Others noted how he successfully cultivated his contacts in the Middle East, pushing the sales of Mirage fighters and helping to establish a relationship with Iraq that has persisted. In Africa, sometimes working with the old Gaullist emissary Jacques Foccart, and sometimes behaving as his rival, the Marantius strengthened France's traditional strongholds. He co-founded the Safari Club, a private intelligence group which was one of George H. W. Bush's many end runs around congressional oversight of the American intelligence establishment and the locus of many of the worst features of the mammoth BCCI scandal. The club involved a number of states, including Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Egypt and Iran, and was intended to counter Soviet operations in the Middle East and Africa. Interlocutor of many heads of state in the world and close friend of King Hassan II of Morocco, Morocco. He was elected member of the Academy of Morocco. After the election of Ronald Reagan to the presidency of the United States of America, he would have become, according to the American journalist Colley, one of his closest advisors doing business in Afghanistan. The Marantz is known to have predicted the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan to an American journalist who immediately reported his conversation to U.S. National Security Advisor Zbigniew of Brzezinski and left for Kabul, arriving in the same time as the Soviet tanks did. He also conceived Operation Moustik or Mosquito. In a meeting with President Reagan at the White House, he suggested that the Drug Enforcement Administration take all the drugs confiscated and supply them covertly to the Russian army in Afghanistan. In a few months, he explained, they would be demoralized and their fighting ability would be gone. The Marantz added, according to his published memoirs, that a few trusted people could do all this, at a cost of approximately $1 million. Edouard Balladur knew him well when they were both working closely with President Pompidou. When Balladur was Prime Minister, he was due to preside over a medal awarding ceremony. He was suddenly unable to attend and he asked de Marenches to take his place. Coming from Balladur this was a serious mark of respect as well as of friendship. Standing at six feet four inches and heavily built, he was called Porthos in reference to the character in The Three Musketeers. Charismatic and a colorful character, he was esteemed both for his valor and patriotism. Resignation. With the coming of the socialists to power, de Marantz is resigned. The presence of communists in the government formed in 1981 was unacceptable to him. He disapproved of the new organization of security and was particularly scathing about the fiasco of the Rainbow Warrior. He was offered, however, and accepted, a seat on France's Constitutional Council publication. In 1986, along with journalist Christine Ocron, he co-authored a book Dan's Le Secret Days Princes regarding his days working in secret services. Claims were made that concealed archives contained evidence of collaboration with Germans by figures of the French resistance during the occupation. In 1992, along with David and Ullmann, he co-authored The Fourth World War, Diplomacy and Espionage in the Age of Terrorism, a book in which he predicted the rise of terrorism as a new form of warfare. This book was a great success among American elites following the events of September 11, 2001.